riding on your horse just fine. I'm so tired I can hardly drive. Welcome back to Barley and Hops. Hey, I'm George again. Look, um, I got, let me show you something real quick. This is the, uh, uh, I've got a couple of buckets in the back that are just uh, going away. We've got a Barley and Hops version or um, brand of 48 hour turbo yeast. I just wanted to show you how, uh, how active my uh, airlocks are. My like, gosh, I got all my fast ferments are full, so I, I had to go back to buckets. <laughs> so there you go. Hey, look. I want to just wanted to share with you. Um, I've had a lot of calls and a lot of discussions, and just to show you that we, we do test and we we learn and we investigate and we try everything before we put these videos together. So we've spent a lot of time um, looking at vinegar, um, and I hear all the time people call me and say, "Hey, my wash or my mash has turned to vinegar, so I had to get rid of it." And uh, I've had these conversations so much, I thought it'd be really good just to do a real quick video on what is really happening in the the challenges that we face when we start discussing this. Here's a real quick example. I get a phone call or someone writes an email or sends a, a note through YouTube and says, uh, yeah, I went out there, you know, two days ago and, you know, after it quit, fit, quit uh, finished fermenting, it stopped and it turned to vinegar. So I had to get rid of it. And I, I always let them go on and on. Then I ask them, I say, well, can you tell me how you determined it was vinegar? Well, it smelled sour. Well, it Folks, it's gonna smell a little sour. Um, once it's finished fermenting, all the sugars are gone, so it's gonna smell a little sour, it'll probably taste a little sour. But uh, that's not the end of it all. Uh, I wanna try to explain a little bit about what actually happens in order for vinegar to be produced. Um, I always default back and say that it's almost, it's virtually, it's not impossible, but it's virtually impossible uh, to turn your mash into a vinegar unless you really try hard. So let me give you a couple examples. This is apple cider vinegar with the mother in it. Now, in order for vinegar, in order for an alcohol product to convert to a vinegar, two things are necessary. One of them is oxygen, and we don't allow that in, so that's one. And the other one is a bacteria. And the bacteria, it's a, it's a unicell bacteria, it's called uh, acetobacter and what it really is it's a, it's an acetic acid bacteria and this bacteria is prevalent everywhere that's why we sanitize before we get started to kill all that stuff or you can use potassium metabisulfite which will kill it off as well but if you get a bottle of vinegar and it has a small scum on the very top that's known as the mother and that's a just a group of all of that bacteria and it's absolutely harmless uh, but it's what gives you that flavor and it converts those alcohols and other things that are inside your apple cider into vinegar so in order for that to happen in order for vinegar to be produced you've got to have those two things and so the that's the uh, acetobacter the um, oh my goodness I the bacteria and you've also got to have oxygen and it doesn't happen overnight. It takes weeks for this to take place at the proper temperatures. And those proper temperature ranges about 80 to 85 degrees or so, and it will take place, but it takes a long time. So please, please, don't just throw out a mash uh, because you think that. Now, we wanted to look and we wanted to get an idea of what, now I told you that, you know, we look through everything and we do a, a lot of studying we can, so we got magnifying glass out to try to get it, but that wasn't strong enough. We've got. Uh, our microscope out and we made a few slides and we produced uh, some video with this and what we're going to do is we're going to put this slide on here and I'll go into this and we'll explain the rods because the uh, this unicell bacteria which is one cell and is prevalent all over the place are cones and they look like little rods so you'll be able to see those and if you look in here you'll notice that you see all those rods and how they're moving around. Now they're all connected to each other and what they'll do is they'll take the ethyl alcohol in conjunction with the oxygen and what they'll do is they'll convert that into a vinegar which is really an acetic acid. Now on the other hand and I pulled some of my fermenting uh, mash and I placed that on a slide and I want to show you the differences this, if you look at this carefully, you'll see 
that uh, this is what the yeast looks like. Now these yeasts are almost stopped, but they're all over the place. You've heard of the term, what, we got 15 billion yeast cells. Oh my gosh, it, look at how many are on this slide. And that's just a small drop. But you'll see how they're all coagulated together and uh, they're just moving around. Um, so that's an example. Let's set this aside. <laughs> just remember, you've, you've got to have acetobacter uh, or actisobacter, or however you want to pronounce it, which is an acetic acid bacteria and oxygen in order to convert anything into a vinegar. So the next time you think that, man, my mash has turned to vinegar, please be cautious. Um, don't throw that out. Try to distill it and see what happens to it. Uh, there are ways to test it, but that's way, that's, that's way out of my league, uh, out of our, yeah, that's way above our league. So, but we can do this, we can look, now later on we're going to get into looking at different styles and different varieties of yeasts and how they react and act. Uh, we may do one with some potassium sorbate and show you how it uh, cocoons our yeast. We'll also use uh, the metabisulfite and show you how that kills off yeast. But we'll try to do all that under the microscope so we can get a really good view of all these microorganisms and what they're doing to help us out. So, until next time, um, please give us a call. Uh, reply to our YouTube uh, if, if you feel so inclined. Uh, subscribe or just give us a call at 254-681-1760. We are almost always going to answer the phone. Uh, just please be, uh, be fair warned that if, if, if I'm on the phone with you and someone walks in the store, of course, I, I've got to divide my attention the right way. I promise I'll call you back and I'll even ask, hey, look, can I just call you right back? Uh, I've got someone here that needs some attention. So uh, until next time, happy distilling.